Welcome back. You are listening to Nate the Hate on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell in the upper right corner so you are notified each time a brand new episode goes live on YouTube. And I'd like to welcome in my co-host, Modern Vintage Gamer. Nate, what's going on? It's great to be here. I know it's been a while, <laughs> but uh, we are back and I am, I'm pumped. I'm ready to, uh, to get stuck into it today. It has been a while, but we are back with an exciting new episode as Sony has a state of play coming up in just a day from the time this episode drops. But this episode is dedicated to three individuals, which are Shamsa, Sketchdog, and the Zelda Sensei, all of whom have generously donated $100 to support the channel. And we thank you for your support and appreciate everyone who gives a donation to support our channel. Without our community, we are nothing, and you are the backbone to this channel. You give us reason to be here, and we are going to deliver the best content we possibly can. And with this episode, that is our goal as we talk Sony and Sony State of Play, of what they may have for us starting June. They are the opening show of the June Video Game Showcase, or Summer Game Fest, which has now claimed the Sony State of Play even though Summer Game Fest isn't for another two weeks. And how Summer Game Fest claims what it claims, no one really understands, and I'm not going to try to figure it out now. But we will get <laughs> right into our predictions for the state of play. Are you throwing some shade there at uh, Keeley? Always. The hype man himself. Exactly. <laughs> we are not hype people, as many will probably tell us in our comments. <laughs> We can get into some of the predictions of what we expect to see from Sony at this state of play. And we're going to start with Sony as the opening company, because so far in 2022, Sony has had an, an interesting year. They have released several big games with Horizon, Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7. And those two games have met with high acclaim, strong sales. Sony also recently launched their new PlayStation service in the asian market where they have the classic lineup of playstation 1 psp ps2 ps3 ps4 games and so forth and that will be coming to north america in the second half of june and sony still has more for us in 2022 so let's get right into the prediction and i'm going to lead with god of war ragnarok Ooh, heavy hitter right off the bat i love it that's right. We got to start strong. And I wouldn't be surprised if God of War Ragnarok opens the state of play, but I could also see it close the state of play. And I believe it's time for us to get a release date for the game. This is something that people have constantly speculated, maybe delayed to 2023, and it's not getting delayed. This is a 2022 release date, and I believe it is coming sooner than many people may have expected. And if you look at some of the recently leaked or even made available on the uk store merchandise for ragnarok it's coming in september and i believe that is when we will see god of war ragnarok come to market it's going to be in the second half of september or that first half of october and that is when we are going to really be able to explore kratos's new journey yeah and i i totally agree i i never put stock into there would be a delay of this game for next year, I know that some people took uh, Corey Balrog's tweets from April a little too close to their chest, maybe, and felt like, oh, no, this game is getting delayed because he's tweeting about the game in that particular way. But I didn't really take anything away from his tweets. I just felt like, you know, he's he wants to talk about the game. But at the time, he really couldn't – they couldn't show anything because they were – still working on it, but that didn't translate to something that would, you know, force a delay into next year. Yes, I, th I think you're right, Nate. I think the game is definitely coming out this year. September is probably the date. And uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what they show, um, and what, you know, what they show us at this presentation. I am curious to know if there's going to be any changes to the, uh, the systems in the game, because we know in the first game, you know, you could obviously run around as Kratos, but there were some limitations in what some of the things you could do. Maybe it, it, the game opens up a little more. Maybe there's some interesting mechanics in the game that 
that we haven't seen yet. I am very, very excited to see uh, what they have for us. And yes, I think it, whatever it is, it will be dated. Absolutely. And yeah, I don't know if it's going to start or finish the show. It could go either way. Knowing Sony, I suspect it might finish the show. um, And I think that would be pretty hype. Yeah. I mean, that's where if it opens the show with a release date, it kind of sets the tone for the state of play and it gets people talking immediately. You want to get people excited, but it could also conclude on that high note. Right. And it depends, right? Like if you want to, I don't want to say start, start small, but you know, you start on a, on a hill, right. And you kind of plateau all the way up to the, to the top of the mountain as, as Ragnarok type of thing. Or do you come out, you know, firing your shot early and maybe have that dip in the middle of the presentation. It just depends on how they want to pace this thing. But yeah, I mean, it could go either way, honestly, but I I think it will probably finish the show personally. And it is important to note that Sony has said that it will run for nearly 30 minutes. So now you can view that as maybe it goes a little less or potentially a little more than 30 minutes you know, plus or minus a minute here or there. And they did emphasize that they will have exciting reveals from third-party partners and a sneak peek at several games in development for PlayStation VR 2. So it does seem as though Sony is kind of squashing expectations in terms of their own presence at the state of play and that it's going to be a little more relegated towards third-party partners. But this is the opportune time to communicate with everyone what is happening with God of War Ragnarok. And if we don't see it at the state of play, it would be very surprising to me because we know Sony doesn't typically host a lot of shows, especially state of plays over the course of the summer. Now they could do a God of War Ragnarok devoted state of play. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe they comes could. later this month and they announce it during this showcase. But I think if they do that, they have to really... They, they must have some secrets or or some surprises up their sleeve because I think, you know, uh, h- how long would you have a dedicated God of War showcase for, which wouldn't be more than like ten minutes, maybe or fifteen minutes? You know, you can you can show some really cool cutscenes and parts of the game, but unless you've got some some things that you haven't shown in terms of the gameplay mechanics, and and maybe they do, maybe they have significantly you know enhanced. The combat in the game, not that not that it needed it, but you know they've added added new um, dimensions to you know the 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 gameplay. And I'm just dude, I'm just speculating, but maybe there's a way that you can (laughs) switch between um, Kratos and Atreus in the game, kind of like what you can do in in other styles of games where you can you know toggle between them. All that stuff remains to be seen, but if they are going to have a dedicated God of War state of play, which you know it could happen, let's be honest, it's it's probably their biggest game of the year. Then it needs there needs to be something pretty meaty for us to to, to show, you know, to, to, to see. I think that if they just you know showed us you know five minutes of, of cutscenes and some gameplay, <laughs> it may not have the the same impact as as what you know what we would expect, I guess. Right, and. I mean, with Sony not really emphasizing a first-party presence here, the only other game I could feasibly see Sony bring to the state of play is the long-rumored The Last of Us remake, which has been expected to come out this year. But with the TV show now delayed till 2023, I do wonder if Sony may take the opportunity to hold on to the game a little longer and try to hold it and release it closer to the HBO series. Now, they don't have to do that, but for maximum marketing impact, I'm sure it's something that they are looking at and contemplating to a certain extent. But this also feels like a good time to introduce The Last of Us remake especially if the game is the holiday release for the PlayStation brand. Yeah. um, Yeah. Look, the last of us remake is something that, you know, we've, we've heard about, we've talked about, we've speculated on. It's a thing. It's in development. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. 
Is it going to be something that we see this year? Will we see at this event? That's a really difficult thing to answer, um, especially now that the TV show has been delayed. I do wonder if they are just going to hold the game for the TV show because, I mean, let's let's kind of think about this for a minute. You know, the game obviously is is one of the best games ever made. It came out originally on the PS2. We saw updates on the PS4. There's the you know the remastered edition as well. And you can play it on your PS5 if you have the uh, PS Plus, uh, I believe it's on yes. there. Yes, yeah, it's part of the PS Plus collection. So what do you think, do you think it would hurt Sony in terms of sales if they did announce this um, without the TV show next to it? Or maybe they're, they're just going to show this and, and kind of confirm that this does exist, but maybe just add 2023 on the end of it potentially and just kind of keep it in line with the TV show. It's hard to really say, but I feel like if they are going to reveal The Last of Us remake, then it has to be alongside the TV show. So if they do show something, it's probably just going to have 2023 on the end, honestly. See, if the the Last of Us remake does come out in 2023... It feels as though Sony now has a hole in their holiday lineup because with God of War coming out in September, early October, you have to wonder what comes out in November from Sony. Yeah. I mean, we know they have marketing deals with big third party games, and maybe that's something that they look to. Maybe they introduce you know, a hardware bundle like we've seen for the UK, and I believe it's on the PlayStation Direct site in the US with Horizon, maybe they introduce another type of hardware bundle for the US during the holiday season. But to go from God of War in September to potentially nothing until early 2023 in terms of a Sony published first party game, it makes me yeah. a little hesitant because in 2021, Sony had a fairly packed second half of the year where you had Ghost of Tsushima director's cut really kick off things. You then had Death Stranding. Mm-hmm. They made sure they had a couple of releases. And I wonder if they were planning or are still planning to have The Last of Us remake out this holiday. And they may just be saying, let's get that wave of excitement now. And then when the TV show does come out next year, we'll get that's just free marketing and yeah. we'll get another wave of hype will have more consoles out there so the game can be a little evergreen for them because the last of us sold incredibly well on playstation 3 it sold well on the playstation 4 and they're definitely looking to make this a stronger brand and a don't want to use the term mascot but they're looking to make it an identifier for the sony brand and playstation brand moving forward I guess the only question I have for you about Last of Us Remake is I believe, and I don't know, but I believe that there may be some content changes that are more in line with the TV show. Do you still think, well, number one, do you agree with that? And number two, if you do, do you still think that's on the cards, given, again, that the TV show has been delayed? When the rumors and the reports first came out of a last of us remake my first thought was that they would modify the story to fit the tv show in some areas because we know the tv show is going to stray from the original game's path be it with you know character exposition or maybe even certain events the way they unfold and my first thought was maybe they're going to modify how the this remake tells that story because there's definitely avenues that they could explore deeper Mm -hmm. now that the sequel is out where they could say, let's shed some light on this character in the original game. So you could understand their motivations maybe a little better in the sequel. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see them try that here, but you also have to wonder, you know, if it is a remake of the original game, Do you just want to stay true to that original outline and not deviate far from it and allow the TV show to be its its own medium? Let it tell the story, but let it have some, you know, creative 
independent, you know, Mm -hmm. means where it can stray and tell its own story in its own roundabout way. So it, it's something I kind of go back and forth with. Yeah. I think both have its own strengths, but they also have weaknesses. Agree. I mean, the the whole release I go back and forth on because it, I mean, everything you're saying makes sense as far as it coming out this year and potentially being, you know, the holiday game for this year. I could definitely see that. It's just, it's one of these games where it doesn't feel like it, it was that long ago when we saw the game come out for the, playstation 4 you know um so why would they do this and it all goes back to the tv show but you're right i mean look they could easily prepare it for for this holiday and get hyped and then you know when the when the tv show comes out next year you know really just push the marketing um engine again and really hype it up again i could definitely see that now there is one other thing related to the last of us that has to be brought up it's brought up every time there was a state of play or a sony showcase and this is probably a simple yes or no will we finally see the last of us factions no i agree i i <laughs> this is this is something that i've i've said before i do think factions exists as far as yes there are builds that are running at Naughty Dog, and they've probably had builds running at Naughty Dog for a long time. I just don't know if we'll ever see this game come out, Nate, honestly. Like, I just don't know when we will see this game. And I don't think, and if we do see it, I don't think it's going to be at this event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels like something that they'll probably hold for a one of those PlayStation showcases that typically come out in September. They're more grand in scale and Sony really promotes them as a big extravagant event. That's probably the better venue for factions. And I mean, that's really all I'm anticipating for Sony at this state of play is a God of War Ragnarok release date and the possibility of the Last of Us remake showing up. Because I think the stars of the show by Sony's own admittance are going to be the third parties. And I think one of the big companies that will have a presence here is Square Enix. Now, Square Enix has been a pivotal partner to Sony and the PlayStation 5 pretty much since the system's inception. Every state of play or Sony showcase, it feels as though Square is there with a new announcement of a new exclusive game, be it Final Fantasy 16, Forspoken, Final Fantasy Origins, Stranger of Paradise. (laughs) They're always there. And this show is going to be no different. It is time that we get a brand new trailer for Final Fantasy 16. And this is something that Square Enix has come out on social media and said, we are finalizing the new trailer. When the time is right, you'll see it. And the time is going to be right on June 2nd. Yep. I think you're right, Nate. Final Fantasy 16 trailer will be at this show. The follow-up question, though, is will there be a date attached to that, even if it's just a year, which seems like is what most companies are doing these days because no one can really lock down a a, a date anymore, can they? It's really more about the year (laughs) the game comes out. So will they have 2023 on the end of this thing or 2022? But I don't think it's 2022, but do you think uh, they, they could commit to something? Yes, I believe they'll show the new trailer and they will end it with 2023. Yeah. Possibly even something like a March 2023. Yeah, I could see that. Definitely fits. I mean, a lot with Final Fantasy 16 feels as though it, it's tied to Forspoken. Now, Forspoken is a game that was supposed to come out already. The game should already be on retail shelves until it faced a six-month delay and is now coming out in October. Mm -hmm. bearing any unforeseen delay occurring again so if nothing happens there final fantasy 16 feels as though it will likely follow within a you know a five to six month window after forspoken comes to market so i think a march 2023 release date at the end of the trailer would be would excite people because this is a game people are definitely curious about they want to see this new direction for the final fantasy final fantasy mainline games and Final Fantasy 15 is kind of, it's well regarded, 
it did some unique ideas, but 16 looks like it's going back to more of that fantasy element. Its visual style is close to that of Final Fantasy 14, which is an MMO. Not everyone has played it, but it's quite popular right now. And 16 has my interest. I just need to see more. Yeah. I need to see more about the, you know, the party, the characters, the world, the setting. And now is the time to do it. This I agree. is something people have been waiting a long time to see again. Yes, absolutely. And I'm in the same boat as you. It definitely piqued my interest. I had some questions initially, but yeah, I'm ready to see more. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. We'll, we'll get to see more of FF16 at this showcase. I think it's going to be one of the, the big announcements at this one. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll also see an announcement for some new downloadable content for Final Fantasy Origins, Stranger of Paradise. I know it's a game that a lot of people make fun of, you know, the whole chaos uh, did element. You, did you play this game? I haven't even played it yet. I played the demos when they came out, and the gameplay loop is really good. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard it's actually pretty good. I think the biggest concerns I've heard is maybe the graphics? Uh, kind yeah, of the, PS2 the graphics, era style. The graphics, the performance, and the dialogue aren't great. Some of the dungeon designs are definitely a area of critique from individuals, but a lot do enjoy the combat and such. So with DLC, that maybe is a little more focused and maybe tries to stay a little more true to what made Final Fantasy Final Fantasy, but with this, you know, new take, it could find some interest. So, you know, we'll see if there's DLC, see the direction they take with it. I think it's a good avenue for Square to stick with it. It seems as though it does have a community that is enjoying what the game has to offer. So got some new downloadable content out there. Might even interest people to return to the game or look into the game and possibly buy a copy. I'm waiting for uh, a discount and I'll pick it up. I definitely want to (laughs) check it out because I have heard good things and Honestly, the PS2 era graphics don't really bother me too much. If the gameplay loop is fun, then that's good enough for me. So I'll probably check it out. Now, I have to bring this one up. It has been two years since Final Fantasy VII Remake released. Do you think Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two gets announced or is given a teaser trailer at this state of play? Ooh. This is probably the hardest question to answer out of everything so far because what's the precedent that Square show us two Final Fantasy things? Well, I guess three, you know, if we count Strangers of Paradise as well in the one showcase. I mean, that is a lot for the fans. Mm-hmm. Having said that, though, you know, we have heard store reports and, and we've heard on Twitter and, and, and um, news outlets that, They are getting close to showing us what's next for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I'm going to say no. I think FF16 is going to be the focus of this showcase. I think FF72 teaser uh, or whatever's next is something else. And maybe it's something later this year in in another state of play. I don't know if we're going to get FF16 and FF7 Remake Part Mm 2 at the same event. This is one of those things I definitely go back and forth on because Square has talked about, you know, this is the anniversary year of Final Fantasy as a franchise. This Mm -hmm. is something that they really want to get ahead of. They want to celebrate the brand. And Final Fantasy 16 trailer, they've spoken out on social media on, of you know, finalizing. So that feels like a lock. I feel as though if I'm if I'm Sony, I want that fifteen, yeah. you know, fifteen to thirty second teaser trailer, because the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake left us with a oh. lot of questions. Oh, it, I got to be honest, it it lost me there, Nate. <laughs> well, I think it lost a lot of people. <laughs> no, and- I enjoyed the game, <laughs> but that ending was uh, something else. And this is the time, you know. 
get your interest back into it. I mean, back in January when we did our predictions for Sony this year, I did say we would see Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two this year. Yes. And I think this might be the venue where we see it. It, If it's not here, it's definitely going to come at some point this calendar year, maybe in September. But I think there is a feasible chance that we do see it make an appearance at the state of play. And I think that would be a pretty big tone setter for the entire show. If you have Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2, God of War Ragnarok release date. Ooh. That's pretty good. That's a, even if even if everything else is terrible. Yeah, that's that's a pretty solid event right there. And that's going to lead me into the next third party that could have a meaningful presence, and that's Capcom. So Capcom, we know, likes to make a lot of marketing deals with Sony. They had that clause with Resident Evil Village that they had the first right of having the game go to PlayStation Plus before Microsoft could come in to put it on Game Pass. And what would be a better time to show Resident Evil Village DLC than at a June state of play? Yep. I would say it's almost a lock that we'll see this night. We know Capcom, they've talked about it in their fiscal reports and it's, you know, free DLC and... We just have yet to actually see it. And Village came out over a year ago now. Mm-hmm. So people are definitely curious, where's the DLC? When are we going to see it? The state of play feels as though it is the right time to show it. And it's also a good time for Capcom to announce, you know, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, which we have seen them do time and time again with this franchise. They released a complete edition with the base game. And if you already have the game, you can just get the DLC for, you know, $20, $25. And I think this is the proper venue for it. But it's also, I think it's the proper venue for something bigger. And I think we're finally going to see the long, long rumored Resident Evil 4 remake. Yeah. Um, again, this is, this is, I kind of lumped this in the Final Fantasy thing where, you know, are you going to really show two Resident Evil things at the same show? It's uh, It would be something that would be extremely hyped if that's the case. And look, they could do that. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing in the, in the textbook that says you can't, you know, show your hand as far as what you're working on with Resident Evil games. I think... One of the, one of those two things is going to happen. I just don't know which one. It's probably going to be the Village DLC. And look, the Resident Evil 4 remake, I think, exists. And I think we'll see it later this year. But you're right. I mean, it could could be at this showcase. And if, if that is the case, Nate, then this is one of the best Sony events in a long, long time. <laughs> so you'd say we might be building a show too good. Maybe. Uh, maybe we I mean- are. I mean, but, on paper right now, we have Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2, yep. Resident Evil 4 Remake, God of War, God of War Ragnarok Release Day, The Last of Us Remake. It's a pretty, pretty damn blockbuster show. lineup. Yeah, that, that, is, that is blockbuster levels of, <laughs> of excitement. But, I mean, let's be honest, you know, Sony needs a, a big showcase, you know, like, and I think they've been working very hard to to put something like this together for a long time. Like they've been pretty quiet. Like you said, they started the year strong, but we haven't really heard much since then about what's going on. Obviously, you know, we've heard about the PlayStation Plus Premium that rolled out in Asia, but it's been it's it's been mostly heads down from from, you know, Team Sony right now. So yeah, they they could be ready to come out all guns blazing on on this event with with all this stuff so i you definitely can't rule it out but i think that there's going to be one uh, one of those resident evil announcements at this show and i think the other one is is going to be pushed to later this year potentially i mean keep in mind capcom has come out with their fiscal report and they said they are expecting a huge year in terms of software sales and we don't know of any game coming out 
from Capcom this fiscal year outside of the Monster Hunter expansion for the Switch. True. And, you know, there is the expectation of Street Fighter VI. I don't expect that at the state of play. I think that'd be something that we officially see at Summer Game Fest. And it's something that Capcom has already said would be shown again more formally during the summer. So I think that's for a different event, not the state of play. And keep in mind, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake, were all at Sony shows. So there's so a precedent here, right? There is. And, hmm. you know, as big as the DLC for Resident Evil Village is, it's known. It's a known quantity. We're expecting it. It's not going to surprise anybody. Maybe the scale or the direction the DLC goes in will surprise people. But I think the big surprise would be having Resident Evil 4 Remake be present and get announced at the state of play. Yeah. And also, I'd like to mention the last state of play. Capcom did have a big presence in that as well. We saw the fantastic game, Exo Primal, mm -hmm. make its debut, which everyone freaked out initially because they thought it was Dino Crisis, and then it wasn't <laughs> Dino Crisis. Yeah, I had, to, I had to think for a sec what you were talking about, I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, Capcom is known to bring big games to Sony presentations and i think resident evil 4 remake fits that bill well if there is that precedent this is this is what i'm going to say i think i'm going to flip it around i'm going to say resident evil 4 is at this showcase the village dlc is later on okay that's what i think now i'm going to flip it again on you as sony mentioned themselves PSVR 2 is going to be a focal point to the state of play. I feel as though we will see the DLC for Village and we'll also get the announcement that Resident Evil Village is coming to PlayStation VR 2. We played Resident Evil 7 in VR. We know it yes, works. It's awesome, and by the way. It is awesome. It's scary. It's tense. And the fact that they already have that groundwork set it's just a natural evolution that Resident Evil 8 is going to come to PSVR 2. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some VR 2 announcements, right? And I think you're right. Resident Evil 8 Village, PSVR 2, that does fit the bill for me. Now, here's the question. Is, is it going to be something that you have to pay for? Do you think it comes as a free update? How do you think um, that would work? I, I kind of suspect it might be a free update, but... You know, they could easily charge you, you know, 20 bucks for it or something if you already have the game. Yeah, I would imagine it'd be a free update because the PSVR support in Resident Evil 7 was just built into the base game. Right. So I think that would be something that they would go along here as well. Now, maybe they do some trickery where the vanilla version of Resident Evil Village doesn't have VR, you know, capabilities. You have to get the gold edition, which mm -hmm. has the DLC and everything. I could see them try something like that, but... Yeah, I don't think it would be like a standalone charge in any way. And that's all I'm expecting. No, there's one other thing I think Capcom could bring to the state of play. And we saw this also kind of appear on Twitter in the last week or so. And it is the next gen free update for Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake, which would introduce ray tracing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Improved textures. So. That felt as though it was just a matter of time. Yep. This feels like a nice venue for them just to make that a quick mention following like a Resident Evil 4 remake or even the DLC for Village mention, say, 2 and 3 remake, now next-gen patch, now available. Yeah. Quick five-second thing. Yep, and it could just be available later today type of thing as well. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I could see that. And that would be actually really, really great for the fans i'm certainly waiting for that as well i love resident evil 2 and resident evil 3 remake i know 3 remake got a little bit of criticism for being too short and a little too uh too scripted we'll say but i i had fun playing it and i think the next gen patches would be would be awesome to see yes i'm actually waiting for the next gen patch to drop for me to play through leon's campaign in resident evil 2 because I had already beaten it with Claire and I want to revisit it, but I figured I can wait a couple of weeks, get all those upgrades and play it in fresh coat of paint. So 
Capcom could potentially have a major presence at the state of play. And as we mentioned, I mean, Resident Evil 4 would really be the big thing. The rest of it feels as though it's it's a nice, they're nice updates, but they're appetizers to the main course, which would be 4. Mm-hmm. Now, we know there's going to be a smattering of indies and other third-party games showing up. So we'll talk about some of the miscellaneous announcements that we are predicting or expecting could be shown at the state of play. And one of them is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge release date, which could be as soon as June 16th. Ooh, yes. Yes, I, I'm going to say yes because I, I, I want I'm, I want you to will it into the universe. So I'm going to say yes, it's <laughs> happening. I I think out of everything, Nate, this is the game that I'm most excited about right now. I mean, there's a lot of obviously great stuff we've talked about, but Shredder's Revenge. Oh my god, I am so pumped for this game. So yes, I think it's time. You know, like there's been some teasers of of the game. There was some some tweet about how it it may have popped up somewhere on some website. Uh, some back-end website on Sony's mm-hmm. servers. So it feels like they're really close to getting this game ready to to ship. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to say Shredders is going to be a thing at this event. Yes, I agree with you. And keep in mind, Shredders Revenge, I believe it was initially announced at a state of play. It was, wasn't it? it? Yes. I believe so. I, I think it was. Or maybe it was the Kawabunga Collection. One of, one of these turtle games was at a state of play. For their initial reveal and i was like whoa but i think it was shredder's revenge so having its release date be announced here really wouldn't be too much of a surprise and another indie game that i'm expecting finally we get a release date on is stray the cat game yes yes this has been in <laughs> dev for a while and i think it's i think it's yeah I, th- I can see this at the show now it's no state of play predictions episode without bringing this game up a game i have willed into existence <laughs> a game that has been reported on heavily in the last several weeks a game you have t-shirts of <laughs> a game that people go outside and they see the fog and they put their hands up and they say is this silent hill oh will konami show up at the state of play and formally announce one of the several silent hill games in development no (laughs) you you can't say yes (laughs) i'm always gonna say no to silent hill even though there is a lot of evidence to suggest that it's probably real (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I was on Twitter when all that news broke out um, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I uh, I don't think Silent Hill will, will be at this show, but it might be at Tokyo Game Show or some some other event later on this year. Maybe <laughs> I'm gonna stick to my guns, Nate, and say no. But. I don't know if I want to say it doesn't exist like I've said in the past because it <laughs> probably does exist in some progress. capacity. Progress we have we have some progress, made. but I'm gonna I'm gonna say no. It's not at the show. This is one I want to will into existence to be at the show because I I want it all just to finally come full circle where we see what is happening with Silent Hill. Be it Silent Hill 5 finally gets announced Mm -hmm. or Silent Hill 2 Remake gets confirmed at the show. I would love for one of these projects to make an appearance at the state of play. But based on our prediction lineup to this point, there's just too much winning for one show. Yeah, we have to to take an L somewhere, right? And it's always going to be Silent Hill for me. (laughs) i mean this would eclipse some of sony's prime e3 shows oh yeah all of this happened absolutely and i mean obviously as with any predictions there's going to be a lot of stuff that will be there that we have not mentioned because it is impossible to predict or to remember every indie game that could show up or even the unknown third-party games that could make an appearance because look at the last day to play 
who would have ever predicted some weird spin-off inspiration dinosaur game like yep. X, exoprimal if you predicted that it's not even a prediction it's a leak mm-hmm. and it'd be like predicting hollow knight silk song right. to say to play it could happen it's it's for whatever reason it's always relegated to a nintendo direct when it comes to predictions there's nothing dictating that would happen it's just history has people expecting it at a direct because it shadow dropped at a nintendo direct during e3 so that's where people just expect that type of game yeah but this could be a very strong state of play for sony in the terms of software shown and we still have vr which will have a role in this presentation and this is probably where we see a little more of an in-depth look at horizon call of the mountain yes and another game that maybe we see have vr because this was mentioned on twitter it leaked in the steam listing is call of duty modern warfare 2 this as a game itself will very likely show up at the state of play we will likely see the debut trailer because sony has a marketing deal with activision on call of duty for the next several years So the timing is right, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they debut some sort of VR functionality to show the strength of what PSVR 2, its own unique selling point of the game to make people say, yeah, Sony's going to have those, you know, maps a few weeks early, but now it has a compelling VR mode. Hmm. I could, I could definitely say that, Nate. Um, It reminds me of Ace Combat when it had the, the kind of VR missions as well. So I could see Modern Warfare 2 having, I don't know if it's going to be an exclusive, you know, VR campaign or anything, but it may have some VR missions um, as uh, an add-on to the game as well. So, yeah, I think that that makes sense to me. And, yeah, I mean, what better way to showcase um, PSVR 2 than, than the Call of Duty game? I think that would really get a lot of people excited about VR psvr2 absolutely now like there's a lot of vr games that they could potentially have at this that are already on the current marketplace titles like beat saber i'm sure will come to psvr2 but i'm not sure if this is the proper venue to announce that type of project i think you want to emphasize large scale vr games that are going to come to playstation vr2 so that's going to bring me to half-life alex yeah, would, I mean, is this the venue you would announce this at to really generate hype for VR two? Because no. as, in Sony's words, this doesn't sound like it's a VR two sh- like right showcase. This is just let us show you some of the projects that are are in development yes. for the platform. I agree, and yeah, when PSVR one came out, um, correct me if I'm wrong, refresh my memory, but there was a specific event for PSVR one. So I, I w- is that right? I'm pretty sure there was when, when they announced Yeah, I'm pretty that. sure there was. So I would expect a similar type of thing when they're ready to show us. And honestly, I think um, that's when we'll see the, the heavy hit of VR games. You know, if there is Half-Life Alex in development, which I kind of feel like th- there is. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's the, the venue to, that we'll see the game. I don't think we're going to see it at this event. Yeah, it's... You definitely want to have that heavy hitter when it's time to give us the release date, the price for PSVR 2. And this does not seem to be the event that Sony is going to give us all those details. If it was, we probably wouldn't be having other third parties take away any of that message. You'd want to have that committed event, as you mentioned, and it would be purely focused on VR 2. So you could give us all those details, a launch lineup some of the games in development further down the line that would be coming to the platform. So this feels as though we're going to get updates on things like the Horizon VR game, a couple of new announcements to get people excited about what is to come, and just give us an idea of what PSVR 2 can do in terms of functionality, visual fidelity, you know, and so forth. But overall... If the state of play, as we predicted, comes to fruition, 
it could be a very strong showing for Sony, the PlayStation 5, and PSVR 2. I think in this scenario, if half of it happens, it's still a very, very good show. And that's kind of what I'm banking on here. I think a lot of this stuff is probably going to happen, but not all of it will. Um, but yeah, I, I think either way, Sony knows that they have to put on a good show and I think it will be a good one for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of third-party partner games that could make a showing, be it, you know, stuff like Hogwarts Legacy, even though it had its own state of play last year, I believe it was, it could still make a showing here because the game's release date is coming up fairly soon. And, I mean, really, if we look at what we have, you know, put a bullet point here, and let's say God of War Ragnarok is given a release date, Final Fantasy 16 is given a trailer, Final Fantasy 7 remake 2 gets its teaser uh, resident evil 4 remake shows up shredder's revenge gets its release date call of duty modern warfare 2 is there stray and a handful of indies have a presence and then there's let's say three to six vr games yep i don't think that's a bad 30 minute presentation no it's very strong very strong and i know state of plays have a stigma to them that they're always disappointments but I think Sony is learning. I'm hoping for a well-paced yeah. event. And they've been pretty quiet, you know, in recent times. So, like I said, I, I think they are preparing a, a good show for us to see. And, um, yeah, I, I feel pretty good that we'll get one. Yeah, definitely something I'm looking forward to this week. This is the first event for the summer in terms of game presentations we have microsoft coming out in just a couple of weeks nintendo has yet to announce anything for june but it's very likely that nintendo will have something this month we have jeff Keighley's summer game fest which will have numerous developers and publishers participating in just a couple of weeks as well but let's hope sony starts june off on the right note and gives us something to talk about for a couple of days absolutely <laughs> Now we can go into some of the Streamlabs questions that have been accumulating for the past several weeks. And our first one comes from Jackie G, who donated $1 and writes, least favorite home console from Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. Well, for Nintendo, <laughs> I would say the Wii. Really? Yes. Wow. For Sony... Oh, I would probably say the PS3. And for Microsoft, that's easy. The Xbox One. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft is easy with the Xbox One. Sony, yeah, I think I have to agree with you with the PS3. Nintendo, I think I'm, it pains me to say, because people are going to take it as me hating on the system, and I don't hate it. You're going to say the GameCube, aren't you? No, I was going to say the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Wii U more than I like the Wii. The Wii gave me Wii Sports, Mario Galaxy 2, Mario Galaxy, Excite Trucks. Oh, there's some great games on the Wii. Don't get me wrong. So that's why I go with the Wii U. It gave me some good games, but I think just the overall failure to utilize the concept of the system well makes it my least favorite. But it was, it was tough. Yeah, that's it's a, a tough hard one. question. I was going to say the virtual boy and cheat, but I was thinking of that too, actually. <laughs> but I guess it's not technically a home console, right? Well, we could have said the GameCube, uh, the Q. Yeah, yeah, the Panasonic Q. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we then had a two dollar donation from Gunstar Hero, and they write: since we're getting Return to Monkey Island. Do you think we could get a Monkey Island collection on the Switch? We got Grim Fandango on the Switch, but what about getting the other LucasArt adventure games, Day of the Tentacle, Fate of Atlantis, etc.? I think it's absolutely possible we could get a collection like that on the Switch. Then had a $5 donation from TT Pete. And they write, I got a Steam Deck. It's neat but also big, loud, hot, and has low battery life. Realistically, how much could Nintendo improve the hardware strength of a Switch 2 while also maintaining its priorities to make something practical with good battery life? 
Well, um, I mean, I think that's exactly what they're working on right now, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I would say they're running multiple iterations and tests on what they can do to get that sweet spot between more performance, we'll say, something that's more in line with 2022 standards, but not giving up on the battery life that, that we we expect on the Switch hardware. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the important driving factors that the Switch would have as an advantage over the Steam Deck here is NVIDIA's DLSS technology to really push visuals beyond the raw capabilities that the hardware has so they could prioritize you know, battery life in some situations and you'd have visual performance that would eclipse native performance due to the wonder that is DLLS. So Nintendo and NVIDIA, you know, will work closely and aim for a specific target that they want from the hardware. Then had a dollar donation from Zebes. Right, great to see Metroid Dread in your top three. Concerning the sales of the PlayStation 2, you have to consider that it was also a cheap DVD player. Then the PlayStation 3 was a very expensive at the start. So what are your top three gaming consoles of all time? Hmm. Asking the hard questions. I mean, I'd put the PlayStation 2 up in my top three of all time. It PlayStation has to 2 be was, yeah. I mean, it defined gaming. It made it cool. Um... Maybe the Super NES. Yep. I was going to say the same thing. Maybe there's some nostalgia attached to it as far as how I feel, but the Super NES is is definitely up there for me. What would, what would round out my top three? Hmm. Hmm. It's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard one to answer. Um, I mean, I love the Dreamcast, but the Dreamcast doesn't have the the depth of library that i would i would say is like my favorite console ever but it's a great system and there's also obviously the n64 which i'm which i really like but i also acknowledge that it doesn't really have the depth of the game library that i come to expect as far as mm -hmm. sony is concerned the ps2 is far and away my favorite system and I don't know, you know, like maybe the Switch could be number three. Um, but I also wonder, I mean, I really like the Xbox 360 as well. Mm -hmm. I like the OG Xbox. Um, I Maybe I would, I would add Xbox 360 as my number three because you, you just had that yeah. amazing era of games. You know, you had mm -hmm. Gears of War, Fable, Forza, Halo, yeah, uh, but you also had some great third-party stuff as well. You had the the GTA four and and five. You had you know Oblivion and and um, and uh, Skyrim and Red Dead Redemption. You know that was a for me that was a really great era in gaming. So I, I'd probably say the three sixty as my third. Three yeah, three sixty is a good way to round out the top three. I mean, I would definitely flirt with the idea of adding in the Wii. I think the Wii and the 360 would yep. really combat each other as to who deserves the placement. I mean, it's tough. And it definitely comes down to age when you grew up, the mm -hmm. games. But yeah, I think that would be the top three. Hmm. Then had a donation from Matanume for $2.34. And they write, been a major fan of dedicated portable gaming since I can remember the Game Boy Color days. The PSP and all its PlayStation games really took it to the next level with action-based titles that played smoothly and felt very big console-like Vita as well. And they followed up with another $2.34 donation and continue with... On Switch, there are, all, there are some action genre games, yet the system feels left out or if games do come out, feel inferior. Look at MLB The Show on PSP or Vita and compare with The Show 22 on Switch. Why is it so difficult to make that smooth PSP-style action game? Hmm. The 
key thing I would point out there is that when you look at PSP or Vita games, those games were typically ground up Vita and PSP yes. projects, whereas the Switch is getting down ports. Yep. They're taking the build of the bigger brother and just downscaling everything to make it run on the Switch, while games in the PSP and Vita were specifically tailored for that hardware, unless you were looking at games like Sly Cooper or God of War Collection. But those games were tailored for that hardware, and you don't really see that with Switch in those types of examples. So I think that might be the big reason you're seeing is such a discrepancy. Then had a $1 donation from John. And he writes, why do you think the Michael Jackson estate, Sega, is so reluctant to greenlight Sonic 3 re-releases? I thought allegations, but those were apparently debunked. And regardless, they didn't pop up until 2019 and he died 2009, which is when this started. I don't think it has to do with allegations. I think it's really all more about creative control and, and money and, and usually things that that have to do with with things like that when it comes to rights and license holders and stuff like that. So I don't really know the answer, um, but I, I would expect that um, it's something along those lines. Mm-hmm. We then had a dollar donation from Liam Werner who writes, how on earth does the DS battery last so long? So you these, so you these memes online about people Finding their DS after 10 years of not playing or even charging it, and it still has like half its battery life. And these memes have a lot of truth to them. Because the DS and the Game Boy Advance batteries are not of this world. Also, I mean, I think it was, um, you know, Nintendo really... After the Game Boy Advance, um, the DS obviously was using ARM chips, and ARM chips are generally speaking low powered, and they tend to not draw too much. But I think they really refined that process on the DS, and and really just again, Nintendo's been great at finding that sweet spot between really good battery life and and performance, and I think the DS is definitely a good example of that. Mm-hmm. Then had a dollar donation from Marin, and they write. Hi, love the show. You make a great team. Nate, I saw your post about Reggie secretly hating the Donkey Konga series. I love the series. One of my favorite on GameCube. What are both your thoughts on a potential new Donkey Konga? Where, when, and how? Uh, where? Never. Never. When? Never. never. And how? Never. Merrick, miracles would need to happen. I would love for a new Donkey Konga, even if it was on the Switch and you had the Joy-Cons and you just used the gyro going up and down and you had the HD rumble to give some feedback as though you're hitting the drum. But we all agree, Reggie was wrong. That's right, Reggie. (laughs) You and Jeff Keighley, you can come (laughs) on. We'll take you. (laughs) Our podcast is ready. (laughs) Then had a $5 donation from Steve. Steve writes, Hi, Nate and MVG. Just a thought for the Switch 2. What if Nintendo would say all your digital Switch games can be played on Switch 2? Unfortunately, Switch 2 cartridges are different, so we cannot support older Switch cartridges. Thanks for the great podcast. That would be terrible. It would be. You have to go all... You have to go full compatibility yep or nothing 50 per like digital only is not enough because you're gonna have people get incredibly angry if they would then have to look to purchasing their entire physical library as a digital game to play it on new hardware you have to have full compatibility if you're going to do 50 percent, i'd rather have none yeah absolutely agree and that may be a bit hyperbole but don't half-ass it. Then had a $100 donation from Sketchdog, whom this episode is dedicated to. And they write, no question, just a small thanks for providing hours of info and entertainment over the last couple of years. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Then had a dollar donation from Mr. L. 
Question for MVG. With the new PlayStation Plus service, what do you think the chances are of us seeing the OG Ratchet Trilogy? Will they put the effort into emulation, or God forbid, will they force us to stream the buggy PS3 versions over the cloud? I think you answer your question. It's probably going to be streaming over the cloud. Yeah, that seems to be the route that they're going with right now. I don't know if I don't know if was Ratchet and Clank ever part of the PS4, PS2 remasters like they did with the Jack. I know Jack games. and Dexter was, but I don't think Ratchet was. But I could mm. be wrong. If they, if if they are, then maybe. But like, yeah, I I would say they're going to get streamed. Then had a ten dollar donation from Adam. Right. Hey guys, I love listening to your insights on things. Keep up the great work. I was curious, what are your opinion is on the Nintendo Switch having less charm compared to previous Nintendo systems? It has great games, but the system feels so bland. Why? One of the things that Nintendo did with the Switch is they really want to make the focus on playing games, which is why the main screen is so bare bone that your focus is always on games. Now, that doesn't forgive them for not having music on the eShop and just little jingles. That seems to be more of a case that they didn't want to allocate the resources for the RAM into those types of things. They want to keep everything speedy. And I think, you know, a lot of people would probably agree with that. They like the speed that the system does work. Yep. But I think, you know, having a little music and just a little charm would have worked in their benefit, but it's probably not something that a lot of people miss. I do miss it, but I'm probably one of very few. Then had a $100 donation from the Zelda Sensei, whom this episode is also dedicated to. And they write, we all know about chip shortages hitting electronics hard. But with a rising tension in the economic markets from all the different ongoing factors, what kind of changes do you think we could see in the gaming industry that we haven't already? Hmm. It's a good question. I mean, we've already seen hardware delays, software delays. Um, the way that games are being made has changed, you know, in terms of get a base version of a game out there and kind of add things later. It's, it's really hard to say what we already haven't seen. So I don't know how to answer. Do you have any any kind of thoughts on that? That's a that's a really good question. It is a good question. I mean, it's it is tough to know what you know we could see that we have it already due to these factors, or how companies could pivot into making changes due to the economic struggles. It's really hard to gauge right now. I mean, if there was a res- if there was like a matter of resources, when let's just say as an example, like the cost of oil is going up, so plastic was more expensive, so they're not going to print cases. You could see certain companies just omit doing physical releases at launch and they pivot more towards digital. You can see those types of changes, but it's really hard to gauge for the unknown. Yeah. Then had a $2 donation from Mr. L. Write to me again. One reason for PAL versions of old games being made available is for multi-language support. How difficult would it be for publishers to patch in the pre-existing translated scripts into 60 hertz roms almost impossible (laughs) yeah it would it would it's like doing open heart surgery you know what i'm saying it's not something that would be trivial to do and i get i get why potentially they are using pal versions because yes you do get a better selection of localized um languages that you can select from and that is a valid reason but i also feel like sony needs to and we don't know yet i guess i should preface and say we don't know what what's happening with north america but it would be nice if there is a selection between ntc and pal and hopefully we do get that but we'll Mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see when when the service comes out over here yes that was a very good succinct answer that provides all the details required and that will conclude this episode of nate the hate once again, this episode was dedicated to Shamsa, Sketchdog, and the Zelda Sensei, all of whom generously donated $100 to support the channel 
And if you'd like to support the channel, we have a Streamlabs link in the description below. Donate any dollar amount, ask a question. We will answer it at the end of the episode. Donate $100 or more, and we will dedicate the episode to you. And I'd like to thank my co-host, MVG, for joining me, as always. Always a pleasure, Knight. And hopefully Sony State of Play this week lives up to our lofty expectations, and we will see what predictions we got right and what we got wrong. But I think we laid out a good framework of what could be happening later this week. And until next time, continue to embrace the hate.